Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane and today I'm going to cover the topic of should you be using subcontractors or should you be using employees for your painting company? I've been in the painting industry since 2006. I've used exclusively employees and exclusively subcontractors. So I feel like I have a really good understanding of this topic. And first off, I just want to say, you know, I don't think there's an absolute truth or there's an absolute right or wrong way of doing things. It really just depends on the situation and your, you know, beliefs and your just opinion. I'm just going to speak from my experience and I hope that you'll take something away from this video, learn something, or at least get some unique perspective on this topic. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you use subs? Do you use employees? Do you think it's better to use one over the other and why? So first let's just talk about employees and some of the pros and cons of employees and then we'll talk about subcontractors. So the biggest pro in my opinion with employees, and again this is speaking from my personal experience, doesn't mean it's true, is that I've found it's easier to have higher customer satisfaction using employees than using subcontractors. And customer satisfaction is the key there. You know, at first I wanted to use the word quality, but really quality is only like 50% of customer satisfaction in my opinion. I think the other half that contributes to customer satisfaction is actual like communication and interaction with the customer. And the painting staff, employee, sub, whoever's gonna be there is gonna have the most time, usually one-on-one -on -one with the homeowner. And being a service-based business, you know, our product is people, that interaction is a huge component and piece of it. So even if you have the highest, best, you know, painting quality in the world, the customer could still not like the job if that communication and customer interaction is either not there or it was a negative experience. And it's 100% true you could have just as good customer satisfaction with the sub as you can with an employee. Just from my personal experience, on average, it's easier to get higher customer satisfaction with employees. That's just how it's been for me. And it's not that surprising. I mean, if you really look at like, what is the difference between an employee and a subcontractor, it really comes down to control and what you can require from that person or laborer. So like technically with employees, there's a lot of things that you can ask them or tell them to do that technically you're not supposed to do with subcontractors. I'm not gonna get into the nuance of that, but there's also incentives that are a little bit different with employees than subcontractors. The obvious one is with subcontracting, usually you're gonna pay them a certain amount per job. Their main incentive, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it's actually a good incentive is to maximize profit, to get the job done as quickly as possible. So, you know, they make the most amount per day or per hour where you can pay a uh, employee a lot of different ways. You can pay them hourly, you can incorporate a bunch of incentives and bonuses, but with certain aspects, I feel like it's easier to build culture, loyalty, and like people just super bought in on the company with employees. You know, I feel like it's easier for an employee to be not only proud of the work they do, but to be a part of the organization. And you know, if they're gonna go out and do like a warranty job, they might have a little bit more buy-in and take a little bit more care, and have more purpose, and you know, making sure that the customer is taken care of, that they leave there with a satisfied customer who's happy. Again, not to say that that can't be done with a subcontractor, I've just found it to be easier with employees. Now, what are some of the cons with employees? Uh, definitely the biggest con is there's more administrative work. So you've got to like, you know, run payroll, you've got to do the interviews, you've got to actually manage them, manage their schedule, their time clock. And let's say that you have like a crew of three painters, you know, that's three different people with three different lives that have doctor appointments and dentist appointments and get sick and get into arguments and all this extra like stuff that's involved with employees. Versus with the subcontractor, maybe you find a subcontractor that's got two guys he normally works with and he's you know doing the interviewing, hiring, firing, managing all that. A huge component of this is the equipment. So when you have employees, generally, you're gonna be supplying the sprayers, the power washers, ladders, that sort of thing, where with the subcontractor, that's all on them. And when the sprayer breaks and needs to be fixed, or when you need a 40-foot ladder over on this job site, all that logistical administrative work is alleviated. So another con with employees is there's a lot more liability with employees. 
So I'll just run a couple examples. Like if you hire them to do full-time work and then you run out of work, at least in the area that I live and stuff, they can claim unemployment insurance, which again is more paperwork to fill out, things to track and keep account of. And then that's gonna actually raise your rates. So your employer taxes will go up if you have more people you know, getting on unemployment because you're not giving them full-time work. Also, painting, especially exterior, can be dangerous. And if accidents happen and somebody gets hurt, you know, that's a whole big can of worms and a lot of liability on you to where it's going to go on your workers' comp, which will raise your rates. And then, you know, you've got to make a lot of accommodations for them, you know, getting back to work. They can be on like modified duty and this whole thing. I hope it never happens to you. I've gone through it twice and it's a lot of extra work and it's just a lot of liability as well. Also with employees, if something goes drastically wrong, that's gonna go on your insurance again and that's gonna follow you and increase your rates and just be stress and burden that with subcontractors you don't have. So that's a good segue. Let's start talking about the pros of using subcontractors and that's probably one of the biggest ones is it's a lot less liability and risk. If you're gonna use subs, I would strongly recommend using subcontractors that are fully insured. And I would also have a good you know, contract between you guys that really just eliminates a lot of liability and risk on you to where if and when something does go bad on the job, that liability is on them. You know, If somebody falls and breaks a leg or something like that, that's gonna go on their insurance and not be a burden onto you. You know, hopefully you never have to make an insurance claim, but if you did for like something that went wrong in the house, maybe you masked a light, started a little fire or something like that, whatever it is, that'll go on their insurance. And again, just reducing liability for you. The other pro, which we've already talked about, is just a lot easier to manage subs and to scale. So what I mean by that is, if you look at it on a revenue or per job basis, I feel like one production manager can do a lot more jobs if they're running subcontractors than if they're running employees. I feel like that's really true for certain specific kinds of work, especially exterior residential repaints. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So take that with a little bit of grain of salt, but definitely the administrative work is a lot less with subcontractors than it is with employees. And then the last pro I'll talk about with subcontractors is it makes it super easy to predict and fix your gross profit margin because with subs you know that is the common way to do it is you just pay them a fixed amount per job so as long as you got your estimating and bidding down really well you can just have it to where it's like okay labor and materials is this percentage let's just say 50 percent so you know with subs it's easy to always come in at that 50 percent gross profit margin because you just pay them for the job and you don't have to worry about like what if they go over on hours or something like that because it's a fixed cost. All right, and then for the cons for subcontracting, in my personal opinion, more customer issues have come up when I've ran subcontractors, at least on a per job basis. So like if we do 100 jobs and I look at out of that 100, how many did we have some kind of issue where for whatever reason, it caused more work for the production manager? I feel like on average with subcontractors, that's a higher number than with employees. All right, and now I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with running both subs and employees and why I choose to run both now and what types of work we use employees on versus subs. And really it comes down to balancing the amount of work for the production manager. And I put it in two different kinds of buckets for the type of work that the production manager will have. Bucket one is all that administrative, logistical stuff that comes with running employees or subcontractors. Like you got to do the meet and greets or the interviews. You've got to pay them, you've got to you know, tell them where to go, all that kind of stuff. And then the other bucket is work caused from issues. You know, client has some kind of issue where instead of talking to the painter, they actually call the production manager and there's more work for the production manager. So I'm trying to balance the total amount of work. And we've already talked about and discussed that with subcontractors, the administrative work is less. But on the flip side of that, the work that comes from issues in my experience has been higher. Now, my story is when I first started painting, all I did was exterior residential repaints. That's all I did. And I did that for years. 
and in the beginning, all I used was employees, that was it. But I saw a lot of the big, successful painting companies around me were all using subs, and I was like, there's gotta be some reason for that and something to it. So I started using subs to try to figure out, you know, the pros and cons. And what I found was, especially for exterior residential repaints, it was a lot less work, a lot easier to scale. So we started using all subcontractors, okay? And then later, we decided, hey, let's start doing interior. But something I noticed was it was a lot more work to do the interior than it was the exterior. And out of those two buckets, the a lot more work was coming from that side of issues, customer problems, right? Like a, a simple example would be on the exterior, it's not that big of a deal if you spill a little bit of paint, you know, it's on some grass, maybe a rock or gravel, maybe even on the driveway, but it's pretty easy to clean up and not that big of a deal versus on the interior, you know, you spill on some carpet, a nice rug or antique or something, especially if you don't notice it right away, like that can turn up to be a really big problem. Plus, in my opinion, I just feel like they have a higher expectation on the interior with that customer interaction piece because you're actually going into the house. You know, they're more diligent on like the actual schedule, what time people are coming, what time they're going. And on the interior, like the detail work is a lot more important. People are gonna be a lot more particular on like how that line looks, how straight it is, you know, making sure that any caulking and like little nail heads are not as easily seen versus on the exterior, it's just not as important, at least in the areas that I live in. I can require my employee painters to paint it in a very particular process where I'm trying to maximize customer satisfaction and decrease issues. But that process might not be the fastest way to do it. Where the sub, like I mentioned before, their goal is to maximize how much money they make per unit at a time. So they might not wanna paint it that way because they're like, hey, that takes longer. I don't wanna do it that way. And I can't force them do it that way. So the reason I say that is we started using employees for our interiors. And what we found was that it was actually less work production management wise, which was very counterintuitive because it's the opposite on the exterior. And again, there's no absolute truth here. All that that really tells you is whatever systems and processes I'm using in the area I'm in, that that creates that, right? I could also make the argument that, well, I just don't have a good enough system and process with my subs to make interior just as smooth as exterior. But to the best of my ability and what I've tried and done, that's just what we found to be true. And that's why now for interior, we mainly use employees. We still use subs. You know, the schedule's all over the place and sometimes it's easier to throw a sub in there and a lot of times there's no issue at all. But something ironic is, again, which probably has to do with my systems, we get more reviews from our employee painters than our subs and we do less work with the employees than we do with the subs in terms of number of jobs. So that's why I'm just saying like in my personal experience, it's easier to have high customer satisfaction with employees and it, it kind of depends on the work. So we're trying to balance the total amount of work, not just administrative, but problems. And then also we're trying to balance, like we want to have high customer satisfaction. So we grow with referrals and on the outside, you know, whether we use a sub or an employee doesn't really make a big difference on customer satisfaction, maybe a little bit more with employees, but on the interior, I found that it does make a bigger difference. And also just for the production manager, just our experience, it's been a lot smoother and easier for them. Their quality of life and how much they like the job and how much work it is seems to be better when we go with that model. All right, and then one more thing I'll throw in there is we started doing commercial work. In commercial, you could use either or employees or subcontractors, but generally how we do it is we always wanna make sure that there's at least one employee crew when we do commercial work, and depending on the size of the commercial work, we'll add on the rest subs as much as we need. So if it's a really big job, we'll have one employee crew, and there are chain of communication, right? So they're gonna deal with the GC or the owner or whoever it is with like change orders and customer satisfaction and making sure things go smooth. And they're also gonna overlook and kind of manage all the subs. So we just tell the subs, hey, go there, do this. Basically the client on this one is the employee crew. So like report to them, have them check your work and say that it's good to, so we can pay you and all that kind of stuff. And we found that that works really, really well for us. But we've also had jobs where we just use subs and things are usually fine. It's kind of a, a middle ground there and I'm just speaking from my experience. 
Another little added benefit to using employees on interior and subs on exterior is, in my opinion, the, the, the interior is a lot safer. The risk of somebody getting injured is a lot less on the interior. I mean, the ground is always level. You're always putting the ladder on a level ground. You're not really getting that high on a ladder versus the exterior. Obviously, you know, you're on roofs, you're on uneven ground. You could be on 40 foot ladders. I just feel like you know, the likelihood of an injury happening is higher on the exterior than it is on the interior. So now I just wanna go over some commonly asked questions that I get when it comes to subs or employees. You know, is it easier to hire employees or to hire subcontractors? From my experience, at least where I live and stuff, it's way easier for subcontractors. Usually when we put up an ad, we get more applicants and higher quality ones with subcontractors than we do with employees. Another big question is, what about the customer? Don't they care if it's subs or employees? And in reality, they don't really mind that much. You know, it's pretty rare when we do estimates that we get asked that question. We definitely get asked it, and we'll just, you know, tell them like, yeah, we use uh, subcontractors on the outside. You know, here's the reasons we do. These are vetted subs that we've used before. They do great quality work. You know, you can see our reputation and reviews, like, and usually they don't care. Like, I thought using employees when I first started would be a good selling point, but I found that it didn't really make a big difference. You know, our booking rate is the same, whether we're using subs or employees. So from my experience, they don't really care that much. It's pretty common in the construction world. They almost expect that it's subs in a lot of cases. And we do kind of have that luxury of saying, hey, we use both, but if it was my house, I'd use a sub on the exterior. I mean, they do just as good a work. So I know both sides of the coin. Another question is, um, aren't the subs gonna like steal the work? And the answer is, yeah, that's possible, but an employee could do the same thing. And you know, if you've set the right expectations and built the right culture, that shouldn't happen. If it does happen, then just never use them again. But that leads into like one big pro tip, whether you're using employees or subcontractors, a great way to have a good relationship and get on the right foot is set crystal clear expectations and also put it in writing and have both of you guys sign it, like an agreement, right? So the key here is you don't just wanna like, hey, sign this agreement, they sign it, and you guys never really look at it or anything like that, but you actually, at least on the things that are really important to you and that are important for setting expectations, you wanna read it, go over it with them, and then the key is you wanna ask them, how do they feel about it? What is their honest opinion about this? And what do they think is the right thing to do? And then once you guys have an alignment and you agree on how something should be done, anchor that and say, hey, I'm glad you feel that way. You know, I hope this kind of situation doesn't come up, but if it does, I'm gonna come back to this moment and you know we both agree that this is the right thing to do and that this is fair. So an example for employees, right? It's like how many days a year is it reasonable for somebody to be sick and miss work? You know, we say that it shouldn't happen more than six times a year. You know, it's fine if it's consecutive days. Like if you get sick and you take two days off, that wouldn't count as two, that would count as one. But it's like if you have to call in and miss more than six days in one year, we just think that that's a little bit too much and unreasonable. And we really wanna know like, wh what do they, how do they feel about that? And that'll tell you a lot in the interview too. If they're like, oh, that's like nothing. I'm gonna call in once a month. It's like, okay, that, that's, that's good to know. I'm glad we went over this because we might not be the best fit for each other. Or what's probably most common is they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. So then when they call in for the seventh, eighth time, you can be like, hey man, we talked about this. I've just found it to be easier because, you know, we want it to be a mutual, respectful relationship. And it's really hard to tell somebody that you're not satisfied with their behavior and how things are going. But if you set that expectation in the beginning, it becomes a lot easier. A good example with a subcontractor would be, okay, let's say that you accept this job, you go to you know fulfill this contract and hiccups happen, right? Like maybe you break you know a little lawn ornament that they had and they didn't like that. And then one day your van broke down, you didn't show up, so the homeowner's upset. Whatever it is, halfway through the job, the homeowner is really upset. They're calling us or the production manager and saying, hey, I don't like this crew. I don't want them on my property. Find somebody else to finish the job or we're done. You know, what? what's the right and fair thing to do there? And having that conversation beforehand is usually a lot easier than when or after it's happened. And you can go back to that and be like, hey, we agreed that, you know, I would have somebody else come in 
finish the job and whatever I have to pay them, I'm just gonna subtract what I was gonna pay you. Like that seems like the fair reasonable agreement. And if it doesn't, you wanna know about that beforehand. But that's just a little pro tip with either subs or employees, have a really good agreement in place. And as you learn and go on year after year, when things come up, just add it to the agreement for expectation settings. And we've just found that to be super helpful for us. And the last thing I'll say is, I just wanna answer the question for new people, right? If you're just starting out and you're wondering like, should I use subs or employees? I would definitely recommend using subcontractors. And the main reasons why is, one is it's easier to find them, at least in my experience, easier to hire and find them. Two is, you know, you don't have to take on that liability or risk. Like, are you really ready for an employee? Can you give them full-time work year round? Especially when you're starting out, probably not. But that's the whole point of subcontracting is like, cool, I got a job, help me produce it. Done, I don't have anything right now, but I'll call you when I get the next one. And then three is, it's just less work. It's a lot easier. So you can actually focus on other things that do need a lot of time and attention when you're growing a business like marketing and sales. And then I would continue to use subcontractors as long as possible or until you have a really good reason to try employees. That would just be my recommendation. Again, it's not right, it's not wrong. I just think that it'll be easier for you because it, it was for me. All right, so I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Email me or drop it in the comments if you have any questions. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.